What's going on? This is Bruce Matson, your host of the show, and I'm here to talk football and fantasy football. Don't have a name yet to the show, but it's a banger. You're going to be a better fantasy football player because of it. If you like the content, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, but I'm here to dig deep on Jalen Rager, one of my favorite wide receiver prospects from the 2020 NFL Draft, and he's about to blow up right now, and you guys just don't know it, and he's sitting on the waiver wire in a lot of redraft leagues, unfortunately, because a lot of redraft leagues are not woke enough, and if, if he's on the waiver wire, hit pause right now, go to your league, pick him up real quick, and then come back, because you're going to wish you have once he starts breaking out. He's been injured most of the year, hasn't been playing. That's why he hasn't been productive. The Eagles drafted him in the first round for a reason. And even in this limited time on the field, he's averaging 86.6 air yards per game. I know the target shares a little, little down at 13%, but he's been transitioning right now. It's a transition period. He's, being, he's getting the deep targets. He's getting the deep ball. That's what we want to see in our wide receivers. There's not much competition in the passing offense for him to compete with. Travis Fulgham, no no disrespect to him. He's had a great season. He looks good. I like him a lot for what he is. But they didn't draft um, Jalen Rager in the first round to not, not use him. Once he gets more acclimated from coming back from his injury, he's coming off a bye week. Usually... Rookies who are talented get more work after bye weeks during their inaugural season, per se, the rookie season. And this could be what we see from Rager. The schedule checks out. He's got the Giants, Browns, Seattle, Packers, Saints, Cardinals, Cowboys, Redskins, Washington football team, excuse me. But this could be the breakout point for Jalen Rager. I could see that. Week 10 on four. This could be where he shows up. He has the potential to break out. He is a very talented football player. You guys just haven't got the chance to see it yet. He can play in the slot. He can play on the outside. He can run routes over the middle. And he can also stretch the field. And the Eagles knows he can stretch the field. That's why he's averaging 86.6 air yards per game. And he hasn't fully acclimated yet. That That's going to go up. Target share is going to go up. Usage is going to go up, which is going to equate to fantasy points. At TCU, he broke out at like 18.6 years old with a 30% dominator rating. He had a large portion of the passing offense. And you may not have thought that was great, but that means he was a big deal when it came to their offensive game plan. To combat what I'm talking about, you can point out to his production metrics his counting stats, and say, Bruce, come on now, dude. He wasn't uber productive. He wasn't a 15,000-yard receiver. He he was on the low end coming out. What I got to tell you, though, TCU had horrific quarterback play, horrific offensive game planning, and it was bad. Only 33.3% of his targets were catchable. Far the worst out of all the wide receivers in this 2020 rookie class. Only 33% were catchable. Not 50, not half the passes thrown his way. Almost only a quarter. A little more than a quarter of the passes thrown his way he could catch. That is definitely going to affect his yardage. And he was still able to be a key contributor to the team. He had a 36.7% dominator rating. And it's all system goes. At the combine, he disappointed because he only ran a 4.47 because we were expecting a 4.3 weighed in a little heavier than usual at 206, but he was at like a 185. He was a 185 pounder throughout his entire years at T- TCU. He's faster than 4.47 if he cuts a little bit of weight, which has been reported over the offseason. So Jalen Rager is a deep threat he's got burst for days with a 98th percentile burst score so the athletic metrics check out the production metrics check out 
The, he's got the draft capital. Oh, there goes my pen, because I'm so excited about this Jalen Rager guy. He's got the draft capital, production metrics, athletic metrics. There, there's, there's nothing to really dispute here. He's got an open pathway to targets, air yards. We have a very small sample of him getting the deep targets. It came out like gangbusters or um, very effectively during week one seeing him get used as a field stretcher. He's got Travis Fulgen to compete with for targets, who, no disrespect to him, has been very good. But Jalen Rager was drafted in the first round for a reason. The Eagles drafted him over Justin Jefferson for a reason. Justin Jefferson, one of the best wide receivers in the league right now. When you look at um, different efficiency metrics, yards per right run, yards per team pass attempt, and all that stuff, and he looks good on tape. Jalen Rager's going to look good on tape. If you look at his TCU tape, you're going to be wildly impressed. Wildly impressed. He is a gamer. He's got a lot of the dog in him. He will fight for the ball. He attacks the ball while it's in the air. And this is when it's in transit coming towards him. Or that's when there's a jump ball and he has a defender draped or two defenders draped across them he he has that my ball mentality he's going to go after that football he can run short to intermediate routes and he can also stretch the field he is probably one of the best deep threats in this class and i i believe it's between him and darnell mooney darnell mooney is a very underrated wide receiver i should do a video on him per se i'm, I'm gonna jot that down after this and i'm gonna bust out darnell mooney video for you but Jalen Rager is a baller. He's an after-catch guy, too, because he's got that speed. He's a little thick. He turns into a running back when he has the ball in his hands. He's, he's just an aggressive guy. He's a gamer, man. And with usage, with him getting targets and air yards, he has the potential to be a WR1 in fantasy, a wide receiver one. That's what we want. And he has this for the long term. He's a guy that all Dynasty Fantasy football players should have been buying during this downturn while he was injured. This might have been the last buying opportunity. This might be over. He might be priced out of this stratosphere here in a couple weeks. And if we don't do it now, if we don't submit those trade offers for him soon... We may never have them on our fantasy teams. Redraft. Most redraft players are sleeping on him. He is on waiver wires in way too many leagues. I'm telling you, you need to be aggressive with him. If you have the roster space, pick him up. If you do not pick him up, you're going to be sorry. I guarantee it. He's going to have a stretch of games here soon. I read off the schedule, or at least most of the schedule where it is very advantageous that he has a good chance of being more than fantasy relevant. More than fantasy relevant. And there's a potential of a string of wide receiver, wide receiver one weeks, WR one weeks. Wouldn't bet against it. Well, it would be easy to bet against because you, you could bet against almost any player. Not named like Devontae Adams, Julio, or whatever. But you get what I'm saying at. He's in a prime spot to blow up here. You're talking a productive rookie out of college who was a first-round pick, who's highly athletic, who is on a pathway to getting a lot of workload. I have him in almost every dynasty league I can get him in. I am aggressive in getting him in redraft, and I am very confident his season's going to turn around and this is my mission statement to you. To pick him up in all your fantasy leagues, trade for him in all your dynasty leagues, and then come back to me in the comments and thank me later. Uh, it could be today, tomorrow, or a few weeks when it starts to pan out. I guarantee you it will. I guarantee you it will. If not, I'll drink. If he busts, if he busts three years from now and he's not doing anything, I'll drink a beer out of my shoe. Guarantee it. If Jalen Rager busts, I'll drink a beer out of my shoe. But that's not going to happen. 
That's not going to happen. Drop those comments down there. Thank me. Pick up Jalen Rager. I want to thank you guys for watching the show. It means a lot to me. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell. Drop me some comments. Give me suggestions for whatever videos you want me to do. If there's a player you like, you want, want my take on him, let me know. Let me know. I'll do it. I'll do it. If I can spit 5, 10, 15 minutes on a player, I'll do it. It's I'm, I'm here for you guys. I'm here to help you guys be better fantasy football players, know the game a little bit better, and all that stuff. So, again, thank you guys. All right, I'll catch you next time. And between now and then, make sure you pick up Jalen Rager off the waiver wire.